Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to a spooky episode of iHeartGeek. Okay, it's not that spooky. Yeah, I know. Because I'm a cheese ball and I don't like horror very much. So with that being said, let's do a horror families episode. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I'm Dub. I'm here with Michelle. I'm here with Tyler. And a blast from the past, we have Mr. Winchester. How's everybody doing today? Doing good, doing good. So, Winchester, Hello. where you yes. been? Uh, working. Really, that's, that's about not, it. That's not Raising, a good excuse. No, working, raising. Well, <laughs> now it might as well be three kids with the uh, insane dog that we got. <laughs> so, but yeah, everything's uh, everything's been good. Okay, so a quick warning on this episode. Although I don't think we're going to go scary on this. We are, if you're very sensitive yeah. to, to horror stuff, um, might want to skip this episode and probably next week as well because we're doing scary novels because it's Halloween, guys. What do you want me to do? Come on. Um, so it's just, get dark. just a fair warning. If you are sensitive to this kind of stuff, which honestly, I don't think it's going to go too far on anybody's radar, but we are talking horror families and a lot of it's going to be the, the comedy side, but then we're going to get to really scary horror families and probably some real life horror families or horror families in name that we all know and hate so with that being said on with the show so with today's show we are doing um yeah i think it all started as an adams family let's talk about the adams family and then it just kind of expanded and with this with this group here you can see why that would expand because mr night of the living dead i'm guaranteed we're gonna talk about zombies a little bit you know not a whole lot of zombie families out there so you might not you know what? Actually, I want to. I want to disagree with you. Let's let's get get the start right away. I think that the definition of family kind of changed, and with Walking okay. Dead, that group that we followed, well, at least until you know we lost Herschel's beautiful amputated leg, um, that was always really a family, more of a family than a group of people thrown together. Uh-huh. You know, with with Herschel being the grandfather and the sheriff being the father so on and so forth maggie no i can see it yeah so i think that was more of a family than absolutely not. so i think that 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 would be fair game for what we're talking about well and i'm sure a lot of those zombies walking around were related so you know yeah they probably ate a few families <laughs> well yeah. and then there's that time that they had to shoot the mother which was just fantastic you know as a zombie <laughs> <laughs> in fictional world people youtube do not yeah give me a strike on stuff. <laughs> I feel calm I down to that now. yes calm down this is fun okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with kind of the kooky and fun fun families um and you know the first two that come to mind of course are the adams and the monsters so mm-hmm. what is your guys' thoughts on this why does it work why does it not work you know let, let's let's talk about this a little bit because i think that um and you know what examples work better than others uh there's characters just if you want to go monsters versus adams i think there's characters i like better in monsters and there's characters I like better with the adams um i don't think either of them work as a complete show don't hit me don't hit me mm. what what do you guys think about the 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 comedy horror family let's start with you michelle um i am a i'm an adams family over the monsters fan um, I like the dynamic of the Adams family. I think they are, uh, I mean, both of them, they, they, I think what happens with these, you know, they're not, I'm not going to call them horror families, I guess. I don't know what, I, I don't know what I would call them. There's nothing but, else we can call them. I don't think. I, yeah. You know, but I think what happens is you have kind of the, the spooky sort of aspect, but then you throw in the fact that they're actually like a loving, close endearing family Mm -hmm. uh and it's just like your brain's like what like (laughs) i think it just and that's how it works it just works because it's got those aspects in it and some of us gravitate towards that more than others yeah um and so you know i i watched like the classic adams family and i was like such a huge fan of wednesday and then you know watching mortician gomez like that's like 
the dream relationship right there. So. <laughs> that's, that's a dark dream relationship. That's <laughs> how I work, Doug. Sorry. <laughs> what about you, Tyler? What, what do you think about these? Oh, no, I, I think Michelle's right. You know, it works because you know, the, the dynamic that they portray on screen. Um, yeah, they're, they're so close and loving with each other and everything. And people were drawn to that. It's like a goth leave it to beaver type thing, you know, the classic <laughs> yeah. black and yeah. white um, episodes and everything. Uh, it did highlight, I think, that we had a lot more of a dark sense of humor within society we back knew, then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, today, I think that's why people don't latch on to it as much because, you know, for, for reasons. And, you know, when you get when you get kooky and dark and whatnot um you're gonna usually go way over the top and, and back then going way over the top was not something you saw everywhere you know, yeah. nowadays people try to push the limits but you know uncle fester you know doing the things he did i mean it's so over the top you know <laughs> and when you got that mixed with a family dynamic where they just show so much love and everything yeah it's 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 weird. I, I I don't know. I I think it showed that they had a moral compass, even though they were dark. So that's, people were like, "Hey, this is right nice," there. you know. Yeah, it's a good what, lesson, kids. What about you, Mister Winchester? So I I really liked it. Um, I kind of leaned more towards the monsters with uh, between the two, if I was going to say it. Um, and ironically, with the whole Leave It to Beaver thing, the producers of Leave It to Beaver actually came up with uh, really the the monsters. Well, yeah. So, um, Mudsters were cool because they kind of, I don't know, they, they, they embodied that whole uh, rockabilly kind of side too and brought mm -hmm. up a lot of that stuff that you still kind of see. Uh, I think it's really good because the years that they came out, you know, what was the horror genre like at that time? It was a lot of, you know, uh, the, 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 old, the old vampire stuff, the mummy and you know, all these other kind of vincent price stuff yeah yeah so everything was really dark and kind of scary and then they would come out with these and you know it kind of turns it fun which continues on today yeah so well where i think the the big problem of it lies is i'll, I'll be the one that, that gets to be the negative voice on this i guess uh where i no. find this, <laughs> where i find this gets to be a negative is where um all these characters and this is why they don't last these when they do revivals and all that, they last a year, maybe two. They keep everything very one note. There's no deeper levels to these characters. It's unfortunate, but um, like what we're gonna talk about here in a second, I think there's other as side characters, I think they do a lot better. It's very hard to do several layers deep with you know the scary family as the main character because that has to be the number one and that feels like it just kind of you know that quote-unquote darkness kind of just shades over all the other layers just, if that makes sense at all so i think that's why they don't stick around long even though they are fun to watch but it's yeah i don't know i mean they're just coming out with a, an entirely new adam's family animated show that they're stuff not like that <laughs> anyway. it doesn't but okay fine but that doesn't i, I guess my point is they continue on. How they long continue. has the Adams family been like something you can mention? And pretty much everyone knows the characters who you're talking about, whether they grew up on it, you know, back back then or now. Yeah. So I think, and that's why I think I think the Adams family sticks or stuck more than the, the monsters, monsters necessarily did. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that because I mean, Adams family was a cartoon, uh, a cartoon strip in the, the late '30s or something like that. So and that's how that actually developed from there. So Adam's family has been around for a long, long time. Yeah. And it still continues on. I mean, it, it creates a bunch of new stuff for everybody else. And yeah, the the new ones might be bad animation or whatever, but I mean, it still brings people in and people still want to watch it, especially around, you know, this time around Halloween time. I mean, yeah. Why not? Just ask my kids. So, yeah. Now, I, I want to hit on another one of the modern horror families that we don't think of as a horror family, but hits every trope that the Adam family hit and all that. And that is the, what you do in the shadows. What um, we do in the shadows. What we do in the shadows. I don't know if how many of you guys have watched this, this show is brilliant. 
this has all the archetypes. It has Nandor being, he's the beaver character, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> The girl, I forgot what her name is. She's the uh, she's the mother character. And um, her husband is the absentee father. He's always off. It's always like he's at work. He's doing something else. He's there, but he was very much the ward. And then we have Guillermo, who is um, just like the Adam family had the, um, had the, uh, the, the cousin that would come over. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like... No, that's the monsters. Had the cousin would come over and oh. that's the Guillermo character who's trying to fit into this family, but doesn't quite. So mm. it, it, it's the rebel. So I think that they've done a fantastic job. Um, I know, I know you yeah. did a little research on what we do in the shadows, Winchester. Well, I mean, it's, it's great because it's on the third season and it's all stemming from a movie that, uh, again, I, I can not pronounce, Yeah. I can never pronounce his name. I don't know why, but him and, uh, just, just fake Clement, it. Just yeah. fake it. <laughs> the two of them creating it from the movie in 2014, but now they got three seasons of this, and I think Colin is the best because the energy vampire is just oh absolutely, my gosh, I absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And we all know him. The, Everybody yeah. knows him if you work anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's great because it's it's so they make it so easy for okay, yeah, these are just a couple of vampires in society and. You know, they their problems are just hanging around at home and you know, believe being flatmates part of me is, you know, like how the movie was portrayed. And the biggest thing was who's gonna do the dishes. Yeah. You know, they're all hundreds of years old and vampires and gonna do whatever they want, but hey, who's gonna clean up the dishes? I mean, it's just it's it's an awesome, awesome concept. So now what I like about this, this is an Adams family made modern. Um, like we've talked about before in our sitcom shows that the definition of the family has changed um, on, in sitcoms and all that. And I think that what we do in the shadows has very much done that. Again, when it feels forced, I hate it. But what we do in the shadows is one of those shows. It doesn't feel like a forced family. It's just these people yeah. choose to live eternity together for no good reason other than they just, they're, they, they're similar. So I think that they've done a fantastic job of being a family, um, which, again, we've talked sitcoms a million times. So you got to have that kind of family nucleus to have a good sitcom, no matter what the definition of the family is. Is there any other modern um, spooky families you guys can think of that aren't on the peripheral? Because I want to hit that in just a second. Anybody else have any anyone they wanted to bring up? Of course. Or like the funny or the funny side. I know you got uh, all the horror stuff. Well, no, I mean if you well, I mean not not necessarily like too much horror, but I mean you can you can go into like, you know, the whole Buffy Oh, that's you know, a good one. T V show thing with uh I mean they didn't they didn't make that like real traditional kind of horror. It was kind of bad. What's an Adams family though? Yeah. Um but like as far as like her kind of family little dynamic in there and what she had to do uh but for like kind of the the funny ones i mean then you kind of just jump into the the movies i think yeah so, so like the core lines oh uh, that's the, the the best family ever in uh beetlejuice the deetses oh, i, I forgot really about, them. about them yeah, yeah. so and you know who always gets who always gets left out of this conversation, but I think deserves to be a huge part of it is Scooby Doo. I was just thinking that. Yep. The Scooby Gang is a family, no matter yep. very traditional roles as family. Everything else even has the family dog, um, and the, the 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 kid that's definitely getting the D and F, and will probably not graduate <laughs> high school. That's Shaggy, um, <laughs> and then cousin Oliver, who was scrappy. Um, I think that they they actually why do they get left out of the conversation when we talk about spooky families? I know it's Any more guesses? of a mystery, isn't it? It's more of a mystery thing. It's not necessarily it's not necessarily spooky, right? I mean, they do all, like it's a, always a demon or a ghost. I mean, it's always a demon. Was yes, there a they, demon? Yes, in there was. Wow, it almost certainly was. Yeah, but it was just the neighbor next door after they took off the mask, yeah. right? It, it's it was, Old Man Parks from the Park Place. 
probably had something to do with their age. They're all being such safe, you know, close to age. Yeah. You, know, you didn't really feel like you had that, you know, for most people. But when you really think about it, there is a family dynamic yeah. there. Well, they, I think that they were ahead of their time because, well, like we're talking like today, what we do with the shadows, we consider that a family because they came out in the 60s that you couldn't call that a family. So it was a gang, I guess. So I, I think what? they unfairly get left in as, as a fa- as as out of this conversation that I think they deserve to be there. Um, okay, now I want to hit where I think that people can shine even more, and that is creepy families that are peripheral to the sh- to to a show, but aren't necess- aren't aren't the main characters. I think they can do a lot more. The O'Poyles or Mick Poyle. Mick Poyles. Mick Poyles from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. If you watch that show, you know what I'm talking about. It's a creepy inbred family that's just weird. Um, there's no other word for them. Now, they are the creepy family that a lot of people know. Um, if you came from a small town like me and Michelle did, we know these people a lot. Uh, <laughs> with that being said, it's I, th- I think that that gives people a lot more chance to shine when they have this side role. Um, and I think they can be a lot more interesting character. I wouldn't watch McPoyles as a show. Um, oh, my. Uh, yes, you would. No. Yes, you would. It could be interesting for a season, maybe. No. Because of the, no. But, <laughs> I do disagree. Okay. So Excuse who, me. Yeah, I disagree. But I'm also like a diehard fan when it comes to Sonny. Yeah. So, and so, the McPoyles are great. Oh, the McPoyles, they're, yeah. I mean, I, they're not evil. They're just creepy. Yeah. And the way they play that, the way they all play that role is so. Yeah. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy Simpson has been there uh, the entire time because he, he helped. Uh, Rob right. McElhenney, yeah. uh, write the entire uh, deal. So, and yeah, they they are a creepy family. They are the one literally that, a family. <laughs> you know, everybody <laughs> rolls their eyes as soon as they come walking up, or they all have some sort of beef with them. You know, from a past. But yeah, yeah, they are uh, they are wonderful characters that they could just continue to expand upon because now there's like thirty or forty of them in you know the later seasons. Yeah, that and they keep I- on bringing up. I really like to see these characters um, in regular shows because it does. Although it, it enhances the reality, it also takes you and makes sure, you know, you're in a TV land. Um, oh. Yeah. So like when they held them hostage. Yeah. 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 Is, yeah. It, do you guys have any other thoughts on who might be um, some of these side characters? Um, I have one that's kind of controversial, but I'll wait and see if anybody's see what everybody's got. You got anything, Tyler? No, not really. No, no, not really. And I apologize. I'm not familiar with uh, Always Sunny. I haven't. That makes me I haven't sad. latched onto yeah. that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you will. <laughs> it's like everything else on the show. Eventually, you'll just yeah. you'll succumb. I'll get it. I'll get to it. Well, what I wanted to hit, who was their own <laughs> little spooky family, was on Will and Grace, and that is um, Jack and what is her name? Uh winchester's Ooh. wife wait how in the world are they how are they i just i'm kind of expanding just this. insult this. no 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 I, lo- I love them as characters <laughs> but they are self-centered they're very they are definitely outside the box so they could be considered that kooky weird family and i call those two a family because they really are they're their own little family I, is Karen, that, that, is that the rich, the rich lady? Yes, Karen. Is Karen, Karen, it's Karen. Karen. What? But I, I think I'm, we're I'm, getting. I'm not meaning as an, as an insult. I'm actually kind of stretching. No, a I just think I, know, I think we're getting. I think we're getting off of of spooky, spooky. The creepy, spooky. Yeah. And more of just like the eccentric. Those are two of my favorite characters that. on that show. Uh, no, I think they're I, fantastic, yeah. but neither of them could carry their own show. And that's kind of the point I was making on that. Is not because. Um, yeah, I think they're they're eccentric and they're different, and I think that really is the definition that we're looking yeah. at as far as these spooky characters is or kooky characters is that they're just different from how the normal world looks at things, and I and I meant so it as, as a compliment because it does 
enhance the show a lot. It doesn't, it's not an insult mm-hmm. at all. So if Jack and Karen went on like some murderous, you know, oh, that'd crazy be hilarious. spree, it would just it make probably, sense. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest, they probably <laughs> did. <laughs> they have the they have the the potential, I think, of doing that. Yeah. Okay, so now let let's shift it a little bit. Now this is when it could get a little bit spooky. That was really bad. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> I owe y'all a cookie. Uh, Sweet. I feel so bad about that one. Okay, so let's talk um, <laughs> scary families in either the fictional or the real world. Um, why? Why does the word family on any spooky thing? instantly make make it scarier because you're challenging that wholesome family dynamic and you're throwing in you know this dark aspect to it yeah it's uncomfortable your brain goes wait what like that's too that's too much but it makes it i think i think that aspect makes it even even better yeah makes it more believable i mean it's uh you know, you can look at everybody and say, that's a family just like mine. And then, you know, for instance, Poltergeist, uh, you know, they, yeah, they, they have the family and it's more about the family and all the problems with the family, but then they pull together as a family. So, you know, that's, that's, that's why I think it hits really good too, is because, you know, everybody can relate to that, to having the kind of family. And then you go the extreme and you go to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or the Sawyer family. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. See, with family, you're introducing the family dynamic into blood and guts and gore and murder and all that. Um, family is generally willing to do anything for each other. You know, yeah. they, they will put aside their moral compass, any respect for life, just to make sure their other members are okay. No, that's a fact. Help the, help them out. You know, oh, you're in a bind. Let's do this. You know, um, you know, you'll uh, you'll see them believe each other over anybody else on the outside more often than not. You know, it's like, hey, dude, your brother's doing this. It's like, no, 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 it's it's fine. He just, you know, he's resolving a problem here. And yeah. so when you got a when you got a family helping each other out, man, it just you don't know how far they're going to go. Yeah. And so it's kind of, it's real suspenseful and, you know, let's just wait and see where this plays out. That gives you a lot of directions you can go in a plot. You know? Yeah. And then you also, some of the most traumatic things that can happen in a person's life can have to do with family. Mm-hmm. So you get some really damaged individuals in these movies and stuff because of things that happened when they were younger or that just throughout family life. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that really it does come down to a basic psychology um, mm-hmm. of of what your family is that makes them so terrifying, um, both real and fictional. You put the you put the word family on because of you know our traditional mindset of a family is something that you're in and you don't have a choice. This is what you if this is not only yeah. what you, what you're in, this is who you are, um, and I think that's what makes it terrifying because everybody's got that weird uncle or whatever that you know I, he's messed up could i be that way too and there, there's something about that family the genetics and i think that i think that that is not an accident when they make the they're more willing to accept it yeah be, i mean that that's just is the way it, it's it's a little scary to be honest um well, now like you, you could throw that one with the torrances with the the shining Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Real deep family, you know, seated things with there with him and the problems that he had, you know, with the hurting the kid and everything. And then they have to go out and he has to deal with all of his demons while he's there at the hotel. But, you know, they had a lot of backstory from there and the problems that he went through. And it just manifested itself yeah. when he got there. And, well, we all know what happens there. Well, and, and another thing that, I think that we're overlooking as far as the psychology goes is that um, throughout human history, it's always family versus family. I mean, you look at uh, half half fields and McCoy is one of the most famous Mm -hmm. um, American tragedies, honestly. Um, 
generation upon generation upon generation we're fighting on nobody knows why because it's their clan versus your clan no matter what um a good example of this would be not because it's because you have to fight the whole family would be like the hills have eyes um inbred creepy weird family that you can't do anything about because there's their blood and that no one's going to talk reason you are you're fighting no matter what you're fighting to the death there is no talking somebody out of their family i don't think yeah they're they're raised in it they're brainwashed yeah. they're conditioned you know from the day they're born this is how we live okay you know that's exactly it because you know going back to the whole crazy uncle thing i have several crazy uncles that <laughs> i've chosen <laughs> not to speak to <laughs> so it's a it, it is it's like a, it's in these movies and everything it's it's they are conditioned they are brainwashed they are raised from day one that you know family is everything and you don't you don't challenge that you don't go against it you do anything you can for your family so you can look at all these crazy you know crazy families in these movies and you see that you see that dynamic and I'm trying to think of some movies where I've seen you know maybe like a character kind of question that challenge it um, a little bit but it all it it seems like they always just go right back to, like to the their Phelps family. family. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody caught that joke. <laughs> that's hey. a slow one. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I mean that's that's a fantastic example of a real life horror family. Um, and we, as a, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. We don't know what goes on, but we know the 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 what we think happened on a lot of this stuff with uh, with the Westboro Baptist yeah. creepy thing. Um, but that is part of that family that, you know, it is brainwashed. They don't talk outside of the family and it is. However, why these are so effective is because no matter what, you need to rely on your family. Growing up, I mean, that's how you learn life. So yeah. I think that that's a, it's a weird tightrope because you can't leave your family. And this is something, you know, psychologically, you know, it's like my family is my family, but at the same time, you know, what if they're like this, but you don't know because you're part of that tribe. So I, I think it's an interesting psychological study on why. And with these movies too, you just, I think you get sucked in because you want to just see how far they're going to go with this. Because when you're you're a family, you're out in the woods in a big creepy house all day long, but you know, yeah. you can come up with some stuff. <laughs> you know, they got nothing but nothing but time on their hands. So, you know, Texas Chainsaw Master, look at that, you know, yeah. going on in there. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why it's so interesting. It's like, let's see how far they've taken it. Yeah. You know? Like the well, Firefly Firefly family. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say that because they, they took Texas Chainsaw family and kind of you double uh -huh. down on that. So <laughs> at least, yeah. Yeah. Because there that's a well that's so terrifying because it's based on a true story, you know. It's like uh, maybe it wasn't as gory. I don't know. I didn't haven't really studied <laughs> it because I don't want to because yeah. I like to sleep at night. But <laughs> but I'll the fact that <laughs> it's just Texas Chainsaw is just more psychologically messed up than it is like horror messed up. Yeah. I mean it's not scary, but it, it is psychologically it is pretty uh pretty messed up well, but yeah i yeah but the house of thousand corpses and you know devil's rejects and stuff that was those movies are great and like i said he doubled down on that and he actually to me kind of took that whole family thing to the next level when it came to you know all the all the different things that you can do with them and the the crazy sister and the brother and the grandpa and yeah you know he he doubled down on all that and it it hit good i think yeah those are great movies and, and I'm just more of a purist i think like i like i like the i like the texas chainsaw massacre i like the classic the classic horror movies not so much i don't know if i really i, I don't know i can see the appeal of the the rob zombie take on like everything i guess prawn. but <laughs> yeah exactly and it's like well okay but you know i don't know but i just gravitate towards towards the more classic or classic or classic <laughs> So some, something early. else, something else I wanted to hit real quick, which I didn't think of until we started, until I was kind of looking through this topic a little bit, and that is how many of the um, 
modern big guy um, slasher characters were a part of a family or their family directly created this character. I mean, you have Freddie, Freddie, because of the daughter thing you have, and that that's kind of the farthest Jason. one. Jason, well, I mean, Freddy, Michael Myers, Oedipus issues. Yeah. Michael Myers is probably the, that's the big. That's yeah. what I wanted to hit because I knew we were going to yeah. hit that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Freddie, though, you have to remember, didn't just start with you know with her. It started as as uh, basically like a, a group of parents who got together and and murdered him. So yeah. So then he was killing all at, the families, yeah. Yeah, then you can look at you know that aspect too. But yeah, the Michael Myers. I mean, you have to you have to mention that but, for sure. And talk about freaking brilliance in how they had made every sequel. No matter what are they on seventy two of them or something. Every <laughs> yeah. single WC1. one of them give you a, just a little bit more of that backstory, and it's is it convoluted a little, but does it still make sense for the character? Yes. And the way that there's, they give you something new every movie. And I think that's been, and it's always having to do with his family. And I think that that is really good um, writing. And, you know, pl I don't know if they knew everything that they were going to do with him when they started or even close to it. If, if a small child asks you to take him trick-or-treating, please take him trick-or-treating. Don't go make out with your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and do, do you can not do wear that a Captain after. Kirk mask ever. Yeah. Don't wear a Captain Kirk mask and paint it white. Well, then like the new the new movie has what like three three generations. Of, Real somewhere, of yeah. I fell off the a kids. While ago. Uh, the girl that was she was babysitting in the beginning, and then there's like she's oh, grown, really? and then there's like yeah, there's like three. I think three different generations now. Yeah, because she's yeah. she's a grandmother now, I believe. Jamie Lee Curtis in it, and. Yeah, I, I but, hope so. Yeah. I yeah. mean, kudos, kudos to her. Oh, she's for still in high school. To, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for staying in, uh, for staying and doing those movies too. Yeah, so, she's awesome. I mean, it's great that. Oh yeah, the original. But it's it's interesting with that guy too, who's been doing those Halloween movies because they just announced that he's gonna do uh, a trilogy of The Exorcist after this. Why? As kind of. Uh, it's it's going to expand. It's basically the second one was never going to exist, which it shouldn't. Thank God, it's the that worst movie. Um, but it's going to just kind of they're going to be like sequels, just expanding on the story. And there's it's a three movie deal that he's going to do. So the same guy doing Halloween now, he's going to move into that. And in the first movie, they're actually going to bring back uh, Ellen Bernstein, the the mom from The Exorcist. She's going to be in yeah. it. So it should uh hopefully be pretty good. I don't know. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of that. So got a lot to live up to. So yeah. since we're not doing a top five on our main event, we're doing something different. And also because I had a really chaotic week, so I didn't get our listener feedback up. We are going to hit real quick. Let's talk about some of our favorite <laughs> horror families, both kooky and scary and real, whatever you want to do. So I want to hear some of your guys' favorites as far as your favorite spooky family. And we can, we can just go kind of shoot back and forth. Let's start with Michelle. Give me a couple if you got one or two of them you can throw out real quick. I don't know. I mean, I think I've, I think I've mentioned them. I mean, I would probably go with the Sawyer family because of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and probably going to go. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, if we're going to do the, the funny kooky ones, I'm an Adams family yeah. Uh, fan. Um, I, you know, I just had, I just had one come into my brain and I'm like, it's gone now. Um, you got to mention, uh, oh, Amityville Horror. So I'm, oh, I'm going to go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to mention them. Mm. And that family, uh, the Cottons in Hellraiser. Ooh, there you go. Um, I could, I've never made it through one of those whole movies because I was a kid when I watched it the first time. Never made Which it. Which is through. so funny that you know we're doing this show and Dove's like not even. <laughs> yeah. I I enjoy a lot of it. I just I'm particular. If I watch it when I was younger, I won't watch it now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know it, it, that's and again any of these any of the classic horrors and uh, you know with with Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, those those families, I I I definitely would gravitate to. Nice, uh, Mr. Winchester. Uh, 
some of the same, uh, obviously the Torrances from the shining, the Dietzes from Beetlejuice, <laughs> uh, the family from, uh, uh, house on haunted Hill. Uh, that whole family that had that problem from, uh, all, all those problems a real life family Stephen King because both his uh, boys are uh, authors Joe and... Hill we'll be talking about them next week I promise <laughs> yeah so Did Lock and Key uh, fantastic by the way uh, anything Joe Hill has written so far has been really good yeah uh, the Psycho family the Bates oh crap so that's a whole different kind of Oedipus complex yeah. And then uh, the last one, and I don't know, I know you haven't seen it, so, uh, but <laughs> uh, The Family from the Witch, the the movie that came out a couple years ago, where it took place in like the 1400s, and they ousted this family from from the little village, and then it was the family trying to survive, you know, with out in the forest and where there mm. appears to be witches and yeah. their daughter is supposedly a witch. It's, it's a great movie too. Nice. So Tyler, you got a couple. I do. Um, always number one is going to be the Sawyer's family. Uh, just so st- sadistic and, you know, at every, every turn you're just like, what the hell? Um, the family from get out. Oh, oh. uh, the that, Will, Wilsons, so I think it was. Mr. They, Wilson. Sorry. They were they were twisted, man. That that was just. You know, I I like that movie. I know a lot of people that don't, but I love that one. Um, just so suspenseful at the beginning. Um, not not highly rewatchable though, unfortunately. <laughs> um, the Robinson family from People Under the Stairs. Oh, those, good one. Those people were bonkers. Yeah, talk about sadistic, man. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that, that was one. That was one of my first movies, actually. Uh, other than Friday the Thirteenth, as a kid, that I watched that had me, you know, hide under the covers while watching it, type of thing. It just <laughs> it wrecked me for a minute. Um, That'll do it. Yeah, and then of course, uh, got to give got to give props to the Voorhees family. Yeah, you know that that drama there, man. Good lord, a mother and her son. Yep. Ain't gonna mess with them. A lot of mommy issues, you know. Hey. <laughs> okay, so you guys hit almost everything. So I want to do a real life one, and not because they're my favorite because I like them. It's my favorite because it's really interesting to research, and that is the Manson family. Um, can't believe everyone missed that. I mean, just true, unadulterated real life evil. And it goes deep, man. It's real. When you deep. Talk, start getting conspiratorial and everything involving the government and stuff, it goes deep. That whole story. Good Lord. Yeah. So is what they're is what we need to learn from this. Mm. Looking at Charlie Manson, don't do drugs, kids. Um, maybe he would have been a productive member of society. No, he wouldn't have. Um, he was always crazy. <laughs> so I just wanted to bring that one up because I know that's um yeah. I, I hope that doesn't sound like I'm giving praise, but yeah. You know what I'm saying. And let's move on to our main (laughs) event. Now it's time for the main event. Okay, so for today's main event, we're not doing a top five, like I already mentioned. We are going, we're doing a pitch meeting. And if if we can come up with some ideas as we go, we'll pitch those two. We are going to pitch a TV show or movie or book or comic book, anything you can imagine, any medium, uh, a play, whatever. Um, And we are going to cast our own spooky family entertainment venue. So I'm kind of curious on what everybody's is. Let's start with Tyler on this one. Okay. So. Small ears may uh, want to leave the room. <laughs> I would love to see. Well, okay, you know, not in real life. Come on. <laughs> um, I would love to see a cannibal <laughs> cooking challenge. Iron <laughs> Chef of cannibalism. You got to use the uh, heart and the and the and the and the goiter. 
<laughs> yeah, the Hannibal <laughs> Kitchen Challenge. It would be hosted by Hannibal Lecter, of course. Oh, outstanding. There we go. Um, three judges, obviously, are going to have to be Leatherface, Lizard from The Hills Have Eyes, and Gareth from the Terminus group in Walking Dead. Oh, um, good. Obviously, it's a morally depraved uh, cooking competition. The <laughs> contestants will compete for immunity against prosecution for their lifestyle choices. Uh, if you lose, you will be featured as a main course on a future episode. So they're pretty high stakes. Um, and obviously, you're you're given parameters on what cuts of meat you can use, cooking styles, seasonings. You know, each episode will have its own <laughs> its own parameters. And uh, yeah, I think that that'd be a good entertaining watch. You know, well, you know what? Props to this that it's pretty cheap to make because you don't have to pay the losers um yeah you, and you always have new products coming in so you don't have to deal with buying new See? wow yeah. yeah it's efficient it's efficient that's it that's mm-hmm. smart and, and in, i mean in, who's in not today's era walk? when we're running through supply shortages this is a winner when when hannibal lecter is hosting <laughs> that show i mean who's not gonna watch just oh you know? all charisma yeah for sure actually i say get cuban on the phone and let's uh shark tank this show oh i think we need shark tank this show <laughs> i'm in absolutely you can do it in real life with real psychopaths, but there's only like eight of them, I think, that are that mm-hmm. crazy in the world. So it'd have to be a short run show. And of course, you know, <laughs> at, at times we can bring in cannibal family. And make oh, it a of family course. challenge. Uh, too. Yep. Like double dare family challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would vomit within the first two minutes, but that's just me. Michelle, what it pitch me something. I am going to make a a blend of I want a Christopher Guest ver not even verses I guess blended with Wes Anderson uh, films film and I want it to go from you know because Wes Anderson kind of tiptoes on on some of it a little you know not quite it's not horror but you know I see the potential but I want to I want to blend them together. Uh, not necessarily going with like a best in show because you know leave animals out of it Um, we could do like royal tenenbaum we could do something with the family dynamic but I want to bring in I want to see Catherine O'Hara I want to see Eugene Levy I want to see all these all of the guys from you know Christopher Guest movies come in and I want them to be directed by Wes Anderson and I want it to be just a complete and total chaotic murderous I want them all just to go rogue, basically. That's actually really. That's, are uh, are you bringing in the the um, Craven monsters like Freddy or anything like that, or is that just it's just going to be the guest people? It's just going to be them. I don't want to. Yeah, no. There's no like. There's no other main character. You know, there. It's going to be all them. It's going to be them. Personalities. It's going to get intense. With their di- yeah. So. Ooh, let let me add on to this just because this is this is fun. You can make it <laughs> so that they are actually making a horror movie and then it goes bad. There you go. Yeah. I, I'd watch this. And then, <laughs> then, then one of the people really is a killer. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. and it's Parker Posey. Cause yeah, she's Parker play everything. Posey. she could be, I could see she's like my favorite in all of those movies. She's, she's so kills good. Someone with a busy bee. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's dark. Okay, uh, Mr. Winchester, let's let's hear it. So mine was just kind of uh, take the dynamic of like Cheers and bring in, uh, you know, kind of like an Adams Family type deal, but just Cheers, where everybody just goes into the bar and kind of talks about their day of out there being monsters. Uh, either Blood that or tap. do, yeah. yeah, that or, uh, and of course, you know, the, the only human would be the bartender because he's the only one who's going to be serving them all. So they got to keep them death. alive anyways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, or we can also do some of these characters in like a full house kind of uh, sitcom every day. And don't know if you ever seen, uh, cause the, it took a little while for like the kids for like full house to kind of think of it for the, uh, the monster kind of way. But did you ever see Transylvania six, 5,000 that movie? No. Yeah, I'm dating myself with that one, but old movie. But they had a uh, little, a little Igor, um, little Igor, 
kid in that one. So that could be the little uh, Michelle for the the full house and uh, sitcom. You know, you have the rock star, which would be Lestat, the Uncle oh, Jesse. Good. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stand up comedian would definitely be, you know, uh, right. like a Herman Munster type <laughs> or Freddie. Yeah, I, I thought about he, he Freddie cracks too, jokes. But, he cracks jokes. But, but if we're going to remain wholesome, Freddie's going to be a bit too vulgar for uh, for the full house uh, household. That's oh. why I said like Herman Munster would be the uh, the stand up comedian uh, on that one for what was it Joey or was it Uncle Joey? Joey, was, Joey name, was the right? comedian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the cut it out. Cut um, it out. <laughs> but I still hey, haven't Alana's found anybody. Son. Yeah, I still haven't found hey. anybody for Bob Saget yet. So you leave her but, out of this. Yeah. You could cast the Olsen twins in that show, and they oh, would work because yes. they're creepy as hell. Yeah, it as Lily and true. Morticia. <laughs> Leave Morticia out of this too. Come on! Wow. Oh, <laughs> I, like the little I, girls I was, the I was gonna yes, go. Which was from the Adams family. I'm just gonna educate and dub I'm a little bit. Horrified. I'd love to see that Cheers version. It'd be great. Yeah, the, the Cheers about day. Can you believe yeah. they always run up the stairs? Yeah. yeah, Pinhead <laughs> comes in and you know he's just upset because somebody else uh stole the box. <laughs> yeah. So somebody has a rip but, in their clothing, he pulls out a pin to do a stitch. <laughs> yeah. So oh, th- yeah, this, this could be horror. Who here awesome. hasn't really seen horror movies? I wonder. I know what the pins are. Am I pointing this way? Do you know what a no, needle you're pointing is the other versus, way. Point the other way versus a there you go. pin? And that's above that you. There, Michelle. There you go. It's early is y'all mean okay so let me let me throw out one i have a couple of them but i'll i wanted i don't know if anybody remembers the show in the 80s uh amen and it was about a pastor and his family um no. it, was, it was a nope. george <laughs> jefferson was in it it was you know our, our uh, sherman helmsley he was in it and there was a bunch of people in it. anyway um jack a was in it Ooh. That's how old this show was. Um, so I want to do the same thing, only we're going to make it very wholesome, but it's going to do the whole thing. And Marilyn Manson is the head of the Satanic Church. And this is their <laughs> sitcom, and it's, it's very wholesome. And you have the one, Sounds like the, one, the one kid that's the rebel that, you know, fights against authorities, and he's, like, very good. He wears a tie. He's, you know, so on and so forth. I think that could be a really fun like for an episode or two before the whole I get family's sick of sitting it. around dinner, got the makeup and the contact exactly. lenses. And Kiss comes over and hangs out. There, yeah. Got the sweater, the prep school. Look. Very Alex P. Keaton. Mm-hmm. I'd like to apologize to all the members of the Satanic Church for that. <laughs> <laughs> he was part of it for a while, I think. So yeah, that's it's <sighs> terrible. That was a terrible premise, but yeah, that was mine. Uh, did anybody else have anything you wanted to add before we get on out of here? Yeah, just never Marilyn Manson in anything. Well, that he was good. He was good in Sons of Sons, Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. yeah. With that being said, check out our website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the we paid extra for it. Go to our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter, our Discord, our everything. Um, talk to us. We do talk back. And uh, go to our Patreon. Yep. Um, get more content and go to our store and get cool shirts and stuff. And until next time, I'm Dub. I'm here with Mr. Winchester. I'm here with Michelle. I'm here with Tyler. Keep on geeking on, guys. You've been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.